We're here at DevOps UK and I'm with Coffee, who is an excellent communicator. So you've given a few talks today and you, as one of your specialisms is storytelling. Yes. So I want to ask you about, especially pertinent because you're speaking, about verbal storytelling. So what are the components of a good story? Um, well, thank you for uh, the opportunity. Oh, yeah. um, DevOps has always been awesome for me, so um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so to, to, to answer your question, uh, there are a few elements that go into um, a good story. Um, as, a, as a speaker, when you come to a conference, you have a, an inherent understanding of the audience. So that is, that is the first component, you know, knowing and understanding the, your audience and understanding what's going to provide value. Because if you, uh, if you think about it, you're in a room in front of a bunch of people and you're asking them to commit to you their time. Yeah. And I think it's only fair for them to expect from you to give them something that's going to be useful, that's going to make their lives as, uh, as developers better. So that is, that is the, first, the first thing you need to think about, your audience, right? And uh, uh, a good uh, person that I respect a lot, Nancy Duarte, says that when you're in front of a, a, a room full of people, you're not a hero. Your audience is a hero. <laughs> so, it, you know, every, every, every speaker that I, you know, at least the, the best ones that I've seen on stage, always keep in mind that component. They always speak to the specific audience they're, they're in front of. Because the audience is going to color what you say and how you say it, yeah. right? So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a component number one. And um, number two, you need to, to craft the story in a way that they can relate to. You know, it's not just story for story's sake. It's a story in a frame of reference that they can, they can see and they can, they can react to. Um, I, I don't want to get too technical on you here, uh, but I, I'm sure you've heard the, the term ethos, pathos, logos, yeah. right? Uh, we're not going to get into, into Latin or anything, but I, I just wanted to point to the emotional content yeah. of, of what, you're, what you're conveying, because every presentation is an exercise in persuasion. Right. And, and as, a, as a, someone who is trying to convince people of something, you got to give them something other than the facts, other than the, the dry information. Yeah. Right. So you got you to keep the, the emotional content of your story uh, in, in mind. And then you have to structure it in a way that every story is structured. It's, you have the beginning, middle and an end. Right. And you have to keep that in mind. As you, you know, as you as you step back and look at the entire presentation, uh, you look at does this you you're gonna tell a whole bunch of small stories during the presentation, but when you take a few steps steps back and look at the big picture, does all of that make sense? Yeah. Is it co is it co coherent? Yeah. Do you have co co cohesion in in the in the way the story being, is being told in the flow of the story? Right, and you were specifically asking about verbal, yeah. right? Uh, now, of course, your voice is gonna play a, a big role. Yeah. You know, it's. I think it's, that's that's the one instrument that everybody knows how to play. But knowing how to how to play your voice uh, also has to do with the type of environment you're in, yeah. right? Um, you might have to tone it up or down, just depending on what kind of medium you're using, right? Um, if you're using a microphone that's going to, now I'm getting technical. If you're using <laughs> a microphone that's going to make your, your voice sound boomier, then you might have want to do something about it, right? Um, what other elements um, in your verbal? Uh, well, this, this, mainly, this is not verbal. It's also very pertinent to it. Uh, your posture, yeah. right? The, the, way, the, way you are, the way you're speaking, and the way your body is behaving, right? Are they in line or are they out of sync? Mm -hmm. You know, because if you give a chance to your audience 
they will choose to believe the contradictions. You know, things that you're saying, um, but that you're not saying, right? The the non-verbal part of your of your of your communication. That's that's what they believe. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know why that is, but that's that's just the way it is. If that's the reason it's important to be aligned, mm. right? The story you're telling has to be in alignment with what you're not saying. Yeah. And I'm I'm a big believer in nonverbal communication or non nonverbal storytelling. Uh, I I'm sure you know this uh, this uh, stat. Ninety three percent of everything you say does not come out of your mouth. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yes, ninety three percent of everything that you say, everything that you're communicating, doesn't come from your mouth. You know, it comes from all the other nonverbal, you know, portion of your yeah. communication. Yeah. So everything has a meaning. Everything has a, you know, it's contributing to the story. And it's, you know, I think it's important for everyone as a speaker to understand that when you're on stage, everything you do counts. Everything you do contributes to the story. Mm. Yeah. No pressure then? No, no <laughs> pressure. <laughs> I, I know, I, you know, I, I tend to dig digress. Um, but no. those are, those are, I think those are the things that I would recommend you keep in mind. Uh, as you're as you're approaching, you know, presentation to a crowd or or to um, fellow developers or whoever the audience is, you have to you have to play to the audience. Okay, so yeah. it's you have to be careful, know your audience. Yes, and then you have to craft a narrative or have one in mind. Yes, no, not just have one in mind. Uh, good intentions don't have legs, <laughs> right? A good intention uh, has needs action, yep. right? And when you have when you have a good intention, you kind of have to craft the story. You kind of have to write it down. You know, uh, one of my friends usually says, uh, "If it's if it's all in your head, it's not real. Yep. It's only real when you voiced it. When you voice it, and the voicing portion is either write it down or tell it to somebody." Yeah. Right now, if it's just in your mind, it may not come out the the, the exact way you're imagining it. Mm. You know, I, I'm sure you've done this before, where you you're thinking something and it, it sounds very clever in your head when you when you when you say it to yourself, and then you say it out loud, and it comes out sounding completely <laughs> different from what you intended. Right? That's that's the that's the reason you need to write the story down. You know, if you if, even if you don't want to script it, you still need to do uh, like a storyboard. Mm. And, and one of the best storyboard ways I know to do a storyboard is to just use a post-it. Yeah. Right. Use a post-it and use each one of the post-it as a as the, the the frame. Right. And then just if you can draw stick figures like everyone, mm. I know I know everybody can can do that, but some of us can't. Just write out the words. You know what? What do you want that one slide to say? If you're if you're using slides, mm. you know, or what is the you know where is that slide or where is that gonna fit in the in the whole story? You figure that out because if you do that, you know, homework first before you go, you'll you'll have fun time. Yeah. Oh, and then there, I suppose after that, yes. carefully crafting a story. Mm -hmm. Um. You have to watch your non-verbal communication. You you have to. You cannot tell a story without a non-verbal part of the story. Now, if think about this in terms of movies. Yeah. Right. Um, there is no dialogue in the movie that tells you I'm sad, mm. or I'm unhappy, or I'm angry. There is nothing in the movie. There is no that lines. Right. Actors don't come out and say I'm angry. No. Yeah. You, you, you have other ways of telling. You know, the music is, is, is part of it. The facial expression is part of it. The environment they live, they're working in or they're in, yeah. the, the scene is happening in, is, is part of it. So uh, movie filmmakers have mastered the craft of telling you what you need to know, <laughs> right? Now, as a storyteller, um, and I see every public speaking as a performance, so you're telling a story, you you need to help your audience see those points, yeah. you know, see uh, or feel what you want them to feel, and you need to be able to communicate that, and that comes through your your nonverbal communication, 
So it's not a it's not a small thing. No. No, it's not small at all. Work it, make it, do it, makes us.